Okay, from one of my first blog posts, you might recall the now world-famous AdventureWorks and Temperature Data Mashup Report. This is a Power Pivot Report, and up until now, all I've shown you is the screenshots of it, and this time I'm going to show you instead how I made it, how I put this together, and then when I'm done with this, I'll share the workbook out so everyone can sort of play with it themselves and follow along at home. And uh, remember that the interesting thing about this report was that it had this temperature slicer, temperature range slicer, which sliced the entire dashboard by the temperature range that, that, that my customers were actually experiencing on the day that they made the purchase uh, in, the, in the place that they made the purchase. So this is what the goal is, is to get, get this, and I'll show you how we got there. So first of all, here in Excel, uh, I already have uh, a report, a very, very simple pivot table report built against the AdventureWorks data. And Ad AdventureWorks is just a sample database that comes with, with comes with the SQL Server, and you can download it yourself. Uh, it's free, and um, it's a very realistic database simulating a, a, the AdventureWorks company, which is a, a fictional company that um, basically sells a lot of outdoor gear like mountain bikes and things of that sort. So this is a simple pivot table of that, and the, our goal here is to add the temperature slicer to the to this pivot table. So over in the um, over in the power pivot window, you'll see here the tables that I've already imported from AdventureWorks, and uh, these came with their relationships already predefined. So if all I wanted to do was slice sales data by things like product or customer properties, things of that sort then I'd be perfectly set. I don't need to do anything else. Uh, but I do not have the temperature data in here yet. The temperature data is over here in Excel on another sheet. So I've already uh, pasted it in here for convenience sake. Uh, now I went and collected this off of the internet myself. I went to the US meteorological site and I downloaded a bunch of data, spent a good amount of time cleaning it, and then um, eventually had to merge it, merge different regions of the country into regions that roughly match the, or well actually they, they do match the regions that are in AdventureWorks. And at that step, I took a little bit of license with how liberally I, I merged different regions of the country. So these numbers won't be quite exact. Don't go using them as gospel, but I didn't make them up. <laughs> I did pull them out of there. So just, uh, just a word of warning. Um, I also grabbed some data from other countries and converted from from Celsius to Fahrenheit, and that's what we've got here. So I need to get this into the Power Pivot environment, and the easiest way to do that is to just create a linked table. And I could have just copied and pasted it over here, but I like create linked table now. It's a uh, it's a single click, and uh, it also lets me edit back on the Excel side if I want to make changes. So I'm gonna rename this new table in Power Pivot to be Temperature. Okay, and now that I've got it here. I need to relate it, I need to link it in with my other table somehow, and so it means I need to create a relationship, but first I need a column to base the relationship on, because remember, Power Pivot only supports relationships based on single columns. So, you know, Excel users are used to that, uh, SQL pros probably aren't, but uh, Excel users are used to that very much, so I need to get one column that represents uniquely each row of data, and in this case, it's going to be region. I'm going to take region, and I'm going to concatenate it with month number. I come over here and say, I can use the concatenate function, but I can also use the ampersand operator. That's what I'm going to, that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to take the region column and use that to concatenate, and I will concatenate that with month number. Okay, all set. Looks good. That's what I wanted. I'll rename that to be uh, region month key. Okay, so now this table is ready, but I need to find a place to attach it. Where am I going to put it? And there might be a, a really ideal, sort of philosophically correct way to do this if I were a SQL, SQL guru, but I'm not. So I'm just going to go to the most natural place for me, which is to attach it to the, to the sales table directly. And um, I'm going to need to create a column that matches that one that I just created in the temperature table. Um, now, the name of the region and the month, the number of the month, well, those aren't actually in this table. Those are in other tables like dim date and um, 
dim sales uh, sales territory. So um, I'm going to need to grab those from other tables. So let's uh, let's do that. And I showed in a post a couple of days ago the related function, which lets me grab rows from related tables. So I'm going to say equals related of the dim sales territory. If I can type it correctly, dim sales territory table. I want the sales territory region column. Okay, and then I'm going to concatenate that with again using the related function of the dim date table. I want the month number of year column. Okay, let's go ahead and let that calculate and compress. There we go. Go ahead and rename it again. I know what it is. Uh, rename it to be region month ID. Okay, so now I'm ready to make the relationship between those two tables based on those columns. That's correct. Go to the temperature table, match it up with that key column I created. All right, so now my temperature table is linked into the rest of my of my world here, and uh, I'm ready to start making reports. But because I learned the hard way that YouTube has a limit to the length of its videos, I'm going to cut it in half here, and we'll come back and pick this up in the second half.